All right, welcome back. Episode two of hitting 5K MR in six months or after running a marathon. Here's where we're at right now, 149 days to go. Still quite a bit of building to do. I wasn't even gonna post this week, but um, I'm going away next week for the whole week. And then there's, then you get into the holidays, there's not gonna be many opportunities to record. So I don't even know when the next video would be after this. Um, but I also got pretty humbled in my last upload with the views like quite low. Um, honestly, I don't really, like at first it sucks, like it sucks to see it, but at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. Um, I think to be fair, I've had it relatively easy when it came to reach uh, with like the first couple of videos. And then it just kind of kept consistent until now. Um, it's a little bit bumming, but like, it's not, This the whole purpose of these aren't for um, like the views, you know, it's for to look back on, to document this, the thing, like how things are evolving and that kind of thing. But it is funny, I think it was the break, the five month break, because usually my videos are like 20 to 30% subscribed and then 80 to set or 70 to 80 not subscribed. Um, but this time it was like 85 to 90% subscribed. So very limited reach of like new subscribers. It was pretty much only getting recommended to subscribers, um, which I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, I think if you're in a similar boat to you can't let the numbers get to you. It's so easy to look at that and be like, damn, what's the point anymore? But if you have like uploading as a goal for beyond the metrics, uh, you can stick to it longer. Cause at the, at the end of the day, like it really doesn't matter if you're doing it for yourself to see progress over time um, and to look back on. Um, so yeah, if you're hesitant to record, just do it anyways. Even if you don't post the videos, just get into the habit of recording things. Um, I just think it would be so priceless to have like years of your life just documented where you can look back on and not even like look back on in a couple years from now, but like think 10, 20 years from now, you can look back on and see exactly what you were doing and like where you were like mentally, like everything is just documented. So definitely start that if you have been hesitant. So I just made a few updates. You can now leave teams or leave projects. Um, so you can leave them if you're not the owner. I do want to clean this up a bit. I don't like how the inbox is here. I kind of want to make like the, like have a drop down here. This thing does not want to focus at all, but I want to move the note, like the inbox up here is like a little popover or something. And then instead of having like this logged in as and then log out, I can just have like just one user drop down, like just like I have in the app and you can press this and then kind of navigate through that as well. But that'll probably be a later thing because there's still a few more things that I have to do on just like the, the, the polishing side of things. Yesterday I was working on getting uh, emails set up. So I, I ended up redoing all of the super base emails, uh, like just the default ones, like the confirm sign up, uh, reset password. And I made those, ChatGPT is honestly perfect for those because I don't know much about email designs. And like, I really, at this stage, I don't care how nice they look. As long as they look somewhat decent, um, I can always adjust later. But ChatGPT is great for, especially email the templates, you just throw in a color scheme and then it can just spit it out like right away. So it's it's pretty nice to be able to do that. So I updated the super base ones, the default ones, and then I'm working on getting this one set up for subscriptions. So like after you subscribe, this is the email that will show up. Just something basic for now. Uh, like I said, I don't really care. I'm not gonna be too picky on it. I just wanna get something there. It'll show some in info on like the plan itself. And then I have to do the same thing with canceling. Um, so I have to do some adjusting with the webhooks and there were some issues I was running, running into with that, but that's gonna be the next thing that I'm gonna tackle. And then after that's all set up, I'm going to look into how to notify, like send emails to the project owners, uh, maybe admins too. I actually don't know if I want to email admins as well, uh, which might be a good idea. Uh, just when there's a new post, like a new feature request, a new bug, uh, maybe you can choose which, one, like which space you wanna be notified on then it will send you an email like, oh, there's been a new post here. And then just so you have some sort of um, insight on when things are being posted, you don't have to keep on checking the app. But that might be a little bit big because there's gonna be like, you have to do it for replies to posts, replies to comments. Uh, I was going to implement like a follow feature um, or a tracking, like where you can track a certain post. 
let's say you have this post here, you can press follow on it and then you'll be notified on things about this post specifically. I, that was very high level of just a, like a quick idea I had. I don't know if I'm gonna fully do that yet or not, or if it should just be a default where you automatically get notified no matter what. Uh, but I think some preferences would be nice to control because you don't wanna be getting like just absolutely spammed of like notifications. And then I also finished the settings page uh, just literally super basic. You can remove avatars, upload new avatars, change your username, uh, and then permanently delete your account. I think that's actually required. I was looking into it. Um, you have to give people the ability to delete their account and all their info for some like data compliance stuff. Um, so I have just those three things for now. I'm sure that'll grow as the app evolves, but just keeping it very basic for right now. Uh, the goal is to have this all done. Like I have a very busy December, uh, but I want to get this completely wrapped up uh, Honestly, like middle of January would be nice, um, which I think is doable. So I don't know. We will see how it goes, though. Man, the window's super dirty. It probably won't focus. It's negative 20 degrees Celsius today. Negative 20. You can't even, the video doesn't even do it justice because of, it won't focus. But, but negative 20 Celsius. You can tell right away when it's like, negative 10 versus negative 20, it's like night and day difference. So I was able to get the emails sending now for new subscriptions. So they'll come in like this, subject, and then the email here. I formatted that um, going forward, but in this example, it's not formatted. But then I think it would just, it's not a full receipt. Um, you can do your invoice on the portal, but I thought it would be good to have the plan name, amount paid, cycle, and then next renewal date, just some information about the plan. And then I also have this email that gets triggered when they initiate the cancel. Uh, so just pretty much the exact same email template, just with um, different plan info. You can't really tell, but this is supposed to have a different background, but you can't even tell because it's so similar. Honestly, even my eyes, I can barely see it. So I might adjust the colors, but uh, like I said in the last couple of clips, I didn't really care about making this super good looking. So that'll probably be fine for now. And I was also going to, do the emails when a new renewal like gets triggered like okay this subscription renewed then usually I think you get an email saying like oh you've been charged or whatever your subscription has been renewed because right now there's no other than you finding out your bank statement I guess there's no email that like lets you know about that so I was going to do that next but I don't think I'm going to do that right away I just added it to like the backlog I'll get to that eventually I don't think it's super urgent right now I think there's other things that I need to do I can pretty much focus now next on in-app notifications. And then, like I was saying, I think in the last clip with post replies or new posts, uh, getting emails on those, but it will be very excessive if there's no controls over that. So I, maybe I'll just keep it very basic to start uh, where you only get emailed on new posts if they are routed to your roadmap. Because how it works is each space that you have you can choose if they route the post to the roadmap or not. So basically something like feature requests, every post here will show up in the roadmap automatically, but then things in like general or like announcements, they won't. Uh, and I don't think I really want to send emails for like general posts. Um, I think just maybe a good way to start is just if it's, if it's like routed to your roadmap, then notify you that there's been like a new post created and then maybe uh, new replies as well. Because I think, yeah, every single post is a little excessive. And then later down the line, I can probably control that better with like adding settings to choose what kind of notifications you want. But I was also going to limit that. Um, let's say not the emails that you get like as the owner, the project owner, you're going to get emails for new posts, new replies, stuff like that. Uh, but emails that the users are getting. Actually, now that I think about it, I might have to rethink that. I was thinking that each plan would have its own allocated like uh, cap for emails sent, uh, but it doesn't make sense for like app emails that are gonna have to happen no matter what. I was thinking something, in my mind, for some reason it made sense that if the end users that sign up to your project get emails, that would be part of the quota, but I don't know what emails it would be unless maybe, it's been a while since I've been even thinking about all of this. So I wonder if that was maybe behind a feature where you could just notify all your, the users in the, in the project and then like maybe about an announcement or something. And then that would hit the quota, but I still don't know.
um, how that would work. I might have to brainstorm that a bit. I think I might not even worry about that right this moment. I might put that like into the later phase. Um, but I do think having e e email notifications as like the project owner for when new feature requests or new support requests would ever come in, uh, I think that's important to have. It's also been very nice having, I think it's been two months, a little bit over two months of working, like, like setting that goal of one hour minimum every day. Uh, and it's been working very well. Like there'd be times where I think to myself, oh, maybe a video game would be nice to play. But then like if I haven't hit the one hour yet, like my brain wants to do the one hour first because it's like that is more enjoyable uh, than playing the game, which is crazy. And I never thought that I would even say that. But I think now it's just a habit of like every night. It's kind of nice. It's a nice ritual. Like I'll end the day job, then go to the gym, go for a run, whatever, like as like the segue to like the evening. And then after that, I come home, eat, whatever. And then just I love that night, like nightly sit down and do work. Uh, for like a solid hour like it's, it's great not to say that it's still not very hard to focus sometimes sometimes it is but i feel like once you get into that like uh, ritual and habit of doing uh like a little bit every day like you your brain almost craves to do it especially once you get used to it and especially this was not the case the first like month or so i think now that it's been two months it's like really settled in um, or set in stone where if I don't hit the one hour a day, it's like it hurts more than just doing the work. So it's it's a pretty nice benefit of sticking to something long term. We have 147 days to go. I just realized I'm sniffling like crazy because I just went to I went outside for like 10 minutes and immediately the, like my nose just starts running. So yeah, sorry if that's really loud. It might be worse now with this mic than if I was just using the phone camera mic. But but yeah, main things. The email notification, notifications I was just talking about. And then there's some security stuff that I'm going to do at the very, very end. And then also like mobile styling, just some like polishing, maybe some migrations of the super base keys later on. Uh, but the main thing that I want to do, and it's only two things, it's kind of nice to break it up like this. Like I can focus strictly on like now the emails, you know, tunnel vision on this, get that cleaned up. And then my next focus would just have to be the custom domains. Super simple. At least I think the super simple probably won't be uh, But then after that then I can just put all my focus into security I find when you have a bunch like a huge roadmap It's so extremely hard to like not get super overwhelmed uh, with something Let's say it's something you don't know how to do and you have that on your mind But then you're also thinking about all the other things that are new to you and that you have to do but if you just focus on like one or two kind of main things and You'll, you'll figure it out. You know, it's like, it's so overwhelming in the moment of like, oh, I don't know how to do this. Like, where do I even start? But it's like, if you just, if that's all you have to focus on, you're going to figure it out. And then you can just forget about anything before that or even after that. And you can only focus on that. You'll figure it out. You move on to the next thing. And it's just, just a, such a better way of looking at it instead of stressing yourself out, thinking about all the different things that you don't know how to do, but you need to do. You can just like work, get the work done not worry about racing, take your time and then you end up doing a better job because of it.